Howard Hill was probably the greatest archer who ever lived. He killed a Cape Buffalo with a bow and arrow. He killed a Bengal tiger with a bow and arrow. He won 281 consecutive tournaments. He was never beaten in competition. As a youngster, I have seen Howard Hill in newsreels from 50 feet draw dead aim and split the center of that bullseye perfectly in the center. And yet he could take the next arrow and literally split the first one. An amazing demonstration of skill. And yet I'm going to look at you dead center and say to you, I could spend 20 minutes with you. And at the end of that 20 minutes, Dick, I could have any man in this audience or any woman in this audience hitting the bullseye more consistently than Howard Hill could have on the best day he ever had. Provided we blindfolded Howard Hill and turned him around so he would not know which direction he was facing. And you rather obviously laugh and say, Ziegler, that's silly, of course. How could a man hit a target he could not see? That's a pretty good question. Here's another one. How can you hit a target you do not have? Have you got one? Are you a wandering generality? Or are you a meaningful specific? Are you going to work tomorrow because that's what you did yesterday? If that's the reason you're going tomorrow, you won't be as good tomorrow as you were yesterday because you're two days older and no closer to the goal you do not have. You gotta have those goals. A lot of people don't have goals because of fear. I wanna skip one and talk about this one just for a moment. I'll be leaving on an airplane tomorrow for Toledo, Ohio. Now, I got sense enough to know that some of those airplanes are coming down faster than they're going up. It's dangerous for that plane to fly. You see in the newspapers where the ships leave the harbor and you see where some of them sink, it's dangerous for the ship to be on the ocean. You read where people lease their homes and the lessee, the people who rented the house, they tear it up. It's dangerous to let somebody move into your house. And yet the engineers tell me that it's more dangerous for that plane to stay on the ground. That it will rust out faster than it will wear out up into the heavens. They tell me that that ship will collect more barnacles in the harbor and become unseaworthy faster than it will sailing the high seas. And they tell me that, that if that house stays empty, that it will deteriorate faster than if you do not have someone living in that house. Besides, planes are built for flying. Ships are built for sailing. Houses are built for living. And man, too, was built for purpose. He was designed for accomplishment. He's engineered for success. He's endowed with the seeds of greatness. And the greatest danger we as human beings have is when we do not do anything at all.